Hello everybody, it's Mark from Nomad Boat Building, and today we are not building boats. Uh, indeed, what we're going to do is talk about instrument building. Now this is sort of a hobby of mine, and uh, I have a friend on the other side of the country, the other coast, over in Halifax, named Alex, and he shares this interest with me. We both like building banjos in particular, and he's been asking me about cutting frets. Now I am not a luthier, I'm not an expert, I do this for fun, and I've done it just enough that I feel like I've tried it a few different ways. And so I thought I would just show Alex how I go about doing uh, this in a few different ways, show him some of the things that I've tried in the past, and hopefully he'll learn a little bit. And if you're interested, you'll learn a little bit. And if you're not interested, well, you can take off. That's just fine. I understand that. But anyhow, this is what we're doing today. We're going to do some fretboards. This is the first thing I used for cutting my frets. And uh, it's basically just a miter box without a miter, just a straight cross cut. And the thing I did with this is I drilled little holes in here to be indexing pins. And so you take something that's the size of that hole, and I don't remember what I used. I guess I had a small drill bit, but we'll use this little thumbtack here as a for instance. And you just drop that in there. And if that's your fretboard, you know, you simply butt it up to your pin, cut your fret, and... Uh, you know it's going to line it up. You do your first one and you shift it along. Do the next one, shift it along, and so on. On, 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 on. And each time you're moving ahead the proper fret width. And you know what? Uh, at a simplest level that works just fine. Just fine. So I did that on that one. And then I decided to play around with some other ideas. I got another friend that builds instruments as well and I picked up some ideas from him. So my next iteration is this fret marking ruler that I created. And again, I just laid off my fret spacing mathematically, drilled some little 16th inch holes through this ruler, and it's like just an aluminum yardstick. And um, so I can use that to either just mark off frets on a fret board and cut them freehand if I wanted to, but I took it one step further and I made another miter box. And this one is designed so that I can actually drop this fret ruler into the box. There's a little pin in there, a little brass pin. And so I could actually stick this ruler to the back of my fretboard and use it for indexing. You'd probably want to shim up the other side with something that's, you know, the appropriate thickness, same thickness as the ruler. Taking that a step further, what I actually did was I dropped a piece of plywood on there. I used this to cut slots in the piece of plywood, and there's my piece of plywood. Now this is, again, another marking device or another um, indexing device. So I take this double side tape piece of fretboard material onto this. So I'd stick it onto the back side. New miter box, but this one has got a little indexing blade. And I just use, literally used like a, a, an olfanite blade in there because it was just about the right thickness. A hair thinner than the actual saw curve so that the curves drop in nicely. And so with my fretboard material, stuck to that, it just slides along and very easily drops down into the right slot. <laughs> That's what I use now and I've got a fretboard set up here to cut in a moment and we'll do that. But before I do that, Alex was asking about just freehanding it. So if you didn't have all this stuff set up with the indexing pins, if you just had a fretboard with some lines marked on it, what would you do to try and do the best job of cutting those frets more or less freehand. Even if you were to use a miter box, having some way of sort of getting your saw started in the right spot. So I thought I would just show that. All right, we're, we're just gonna pretend this little piece of ash is gonna be our fretboard. And we're not gonna worry about marking off a bunch of fret spacings on here. We could do that, but I'm just gonna show you exactly a good way to sort of help put a line or put a, a saw curve in the exact spot that you want it. So for instance, suppose we wanted a saw curve right there. Beyond draw, just drawing the line, what I would do is take a knife, and this is a technique that we use in boat building or in fine woodworking called protecting the line. And so if I take a knife and I just curve that a little bit, okay, now that gives me a much more positive stop. Point, problem is that my saw can't easily grab that. So there's a little technique that we use to help improve that. And let me just 
put something down here to keep things from sliding around too much. So what we do is we take a chisel and we just very carefully, very carefully, and we'll do it this way, just come in from one side of that line and just take the tiniest little chip out of there. I'll show you how big those are. Those are really small and you could you could come in from both sides if you want but I think one side's probably fine. Okay so there we are. That's how small those are. They're just teeny tiny. Okay now with that taken out um, I've got something that my saw can grab easily. Now I've already used that original miter box we have here. Now to drop that in there and then I'll grab my fretting saw. Not sure if this is going to reach all the way down there because I'm using a different setup here. Let's see. Yeah, it should. So I'm just using a, a Dazuki saw that happens to have the right size kerf to it, which is something like 0 0.020 or something like that. So the with the fretting saw and that little slot, I can very easily find a positive stop, a point where that saw wants to land right in that spot without um, too much trouble. And it's just a matter of cutting down until my, my uh, depth stop hits the, hits the edges of the miter box. And this one isn't necessarily set for the right depth for this uh, material. There we go, we get a nice clean line there with no tear out on either side and that's right where I wanted it to be. And so long as you put that little chamfer on the same side of each line, it's all going to index out just fine. If you were to cut it on both sides, that would also work. You might run into a slight bit of inaccuracy there, but really the fret system we use is uh, sort of a happy medium at best anyway. It's, it's never quite right and especially with banjos it's never quite on the money so it's as good as we get with uh, in a convenient way. Now another little fret innovation is uh, and it's not really much of an innovation but if we're to look at this fretboard here I'll flip it over so it's dark. I've just got this uh, plexiglass fretting scale that I've created and my the whole point of this is really for planning so I've got sort of, it's hard to see it, there's an outline of my of a fingerboard on here with the fifth string cutaway and I can use this just to juggle this around on a piece of fret board material to sort of find the best looking grain and I can use it to sort of eyeball where I want to put inlays and stuff like that if I feel the need to do those ahead of time or if I want to, if there's some little feature that I want to um, work around or work with. So now let's just take this fret board here and we're going to set this up and we'll cut some frets. So I've got a piece of uh, mahogany with some veneer on the back already. This is going to be my fret board for the next banjo I'm building. And I'm just going to use a little bit of double sided tape on the back, piece at either end. And my fret saw is already set up to work with. Um, fretboard material that is this thickness, which is approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch. And so what I want to do is just line this up with one side of my fretboard blank and I'm butting up one end. This is my sort of the end of my fretboard of the nuts going to be. So that's like a finished cut right there. And now because I'm using this indexing system, which is reasonably accurate here. Um, I'm not going to bother with trying to, with pre-cutting any frets. I'm pretty confident like this, this miter box is going to do a good job for me. It's just a question of going down until I'm not, I can feel that I'm not cutting anymore. And then boom, we lift it, slide it along. And the nice thing about this system is I don't have sawdust falling down into sort of the indexing um, portion of the, of the jig. It's, it's buried.
I got part of this idea from a guy named Brian McAllister. He's got a YouTube channel called Learn Woodworking. So there's some really good stuff on there, so it's worth checking out. And I also noticed that Lee Valley Tools very recently uh, put out a Dazuki saw with an adjustable depth depth uh, blade so it's like the handle and frame are separate from the blade entirely and the blade has got big slots in it so you can adjust the depth on it and I'm thinking I might just pick one of those up and see if it'll do the job better than this one will. Now this isn't really so different than any jig that you would use on a table saw or um, Stuart McDonald sells a fretting jig that basically does the exact same thing. Of course I put this together for the cost of nothing but a bit of scrap and a little bit of time. Come on, the only downside is I tend to overshoot sometimes, just like that. But that that's me more so than the jig. remember to stop early enough because in fact I hope I didn't go too far here because you could overshoot and end up with uh, a fretboard that is the wrong length and putting too many frets on. All right there you go that's my little system for cutting frets not much to it I'm not sure if that was useful to you or not if so let me know and uh, if you want to see some more of these videos I'm not really planning to do a series of banjo building videos exactly because I'm no expert on it I'm just goofing around but um, if you're enjoying seeing me doing something other than boats, let me know. All right, ciao for now. Good to see you.